is micromanaging your life with an app even a good idea? And what triggered this for me is an article in Vice called that, is micromanaging your life with an app really a good idea? And it's a pretty clickbaity title, I'll definitely say that, but I actually thought the article was pretty even-handed. And basically, it talks about how there's all these apps, and some of the apps it mentions are like Jira, which we use at AE, Todoist, which is super popular in the productivity space, Trello and Notion are all mentioned. And the idea is there's so many of these apps out there, but are they actually helping us? And by the title, you might think the article is gonna take the negative side, but actually the answer seems to be, yeah, for many people, they actually find these productivity apps, these task managers, these to-do apps, really, really helpful. And it gave examples of people who actually find that these apps help them with their mental health because it gets the stress out of their mind. It's like the whole David Allen thing of how your mind is a factory, not a warehouse. And by getting this stuff out of your head into a trusted system, it really gives you calm and helps you focus. The other side of that though is it says that there are two different types of people. It makes a distinction between task manager people, so to speak. So the type of people who use these type of apps and dreamers, which are people for whom planning and scheduling are just like anathema, like they just have no use for these type of apps. And there were some takeaways from this article I thought were kind of interesting. So for example, it actually said that task managers or to-do lists actually have really low penetration. Like the CEO of any.do, which is a popular task manager, says task managers only have 5% market penetration, which is kind of low to me. And the to-do a CEO says something which I totally agree with, which is that most people actually don't use task managers and to-do lists very well. What they do is they load them up with tasks to do today, and then they maybe only do a third of them. So they push them forward day after day after day, and all of a sudden they have like 100 tasks <laughs> to do today, and they just kind of give up. So I'm curious what you think of this, Tan. First of all, do you agree that task managers and to-do lists have a pretty low penetration? And what do you think of this distinction between task manager people and dreamers? Do you think it's that cut and dry? So when I came across this Vice article on micromanaging your life with an app, if it's a good idea or not, my instinct was, yes, it is a good idea. And as you go read the article, it talks about, okay, people who organize their time versus people who are dreamers who just simply don't know how to plan or be proactive. And I use the word proactive because it immediately made me think of the two camps of people who are being proactive versus reactive. Now, in the article, they talk about people who are in performance roles, and those tend to be users of calendar apps, of to-do list managers or task managers and all these different productivity tools. And then you have people who are reactive or people who are just really busy or as they would say in the article, dreamers, but don't really do anything other than just doing the work that needs to be done, especially when it's handed to them. And for most people, especially if we work in a corporate setting, most of the work is handed to us. We're being told what to do. And then there's a smaller group of people that is proactive and saying, hey, yes, I know what I need to do, but I also want to work forward and look ahead and sometimes we are entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs where we have to create something from scratch. And then you do have to have that foresight and skill to say, hey, where I am today is not where I want to be two months from now, three months from now, or a year from now. And it takes a little bit of planning and organization to do that. And so having tools to help you with that, to speed up the whole process makes a lot of sense. So when I was reading the article, naturally I was the person that was being described as, yes, yes, I'm in a performance role. I'm the founder of a company. I'm leading a team. I'm leading a business, but also I'm being measured by my performance as well. So using tools like Jira, Todoist, Trello, Notion, Evernote, whatever you're using makes a lot of sense. And so for those who don't use any apps whatsoever, can you still be productive? Absolutely. Yes. You don't have to use productivity apps to be productive. You can do just fine with pen and paper and get everything done. However, 
to me, there are a lot of disadvantages to that because you can't organize a lot of information. You can't organize your stuff while you're on the go. There's no syncing of devices and information. And oftentimes information is stored in silos. And so you have to go to a particular silo to find your information. So for example, you write stuff on sticky notes. If you're on a trip somewhere, good luck getting access to that sticky note because it's at home, right? Versus having stored stuff in the cloud so you can easily access stuff and find stuff. So it's kind of a double-edged sword because it also makes people feel overwhelmed and feeling like they always have access to everything and it makes it hard to disconnect and rest and recover. So there are things you have to learn, but those are all skills that people can pick up and hence why we created a course called 25X Productivity System where we teach people with 25 skills to master productivity. And there's a lot of the stuff that I talk about where you actually don't need a lot of the apps. We're, we actually recommend only three in particular that you need. And everything else is a skill that you have to develop if you want to be more productive. And we have found that there's essentially 25 skills that everybody needs if they want to be masters of productivity. If you just want to have a good foundation of productivity, you probably need like seven to 10 skills or so. And planning is one of them, being organized with your time, being organized with your energy, making sure you're focusing on the right thing. These are all skills you will need. And you don't necessarily need an app for that. So the basic premise of the article I do agree with. And if I look at my friend circles who are not entrepreneurs or not in a performance role, if I look at their MacBook or their Windows computer, most of them use Outlook or use whatever is default with the operating system and just figure out a way to use it. Or they use the tool that's being forced upon them by the company. So I'm not surprised that maybe 5% of the market is taken up by these productivity tools because my eye test in the real world says that's probably true. One thing I saw that was interesting too is... They included Trello and Kanban into the task management bucket, where in our experience, a lot of times, if people don't respond well to using a to-do list, like a checklist, that type of thing, a lot of times they don't respond well to that, but they maybe do respond a little more positively to things like Trello and a Kanban board because it's more visual. You're not listing things out and checking things off. You're moving cards around. But I thought it was kind of interesting that for many people, even that's too much. Even that's too much structure. They just don't respond well to it. 